Agriculture Form 1. We are still on the same topic, uh, topic 2, that's agricultural research. Of course, last time we discussed on the meaning of uh, the word agricultural research. Then later on, we also looked uh, on the problems uh, requiring to conduct agricultural research. Then later on, we also looked on the importances of agricultural research. So now, let us continue from where we stopped last time. And now, uh, we need to look on the scientific approach to agricultural research. Scientific approach to agricultural research. When you are conducting agricultural research, there is need to follow some procedures. So there are stages which we are going to discuss uh, in order for uh, agricultural research to be uh, conducted success successfully. So there are nine uh, stages uh, which you are supposed to follow when you are conducting agricultural research. The first stage is what we call problem identification. Of course, we're going to explain into details what uh, is requiring under each and every stage. So the first stage is uh, problem identification. Uh, number two, it's a uh, hypothesis formulation followed by aims or objectives. Then uh, number four, is what we call experimental des design, experimental design. Number five, carrying out the experiment. Number six, data correction and recording. Number seven, data analysis. Number eight, it's data evaluation. Then the last uh, stage, it's uh, report writing. So as I've already uh, said, that we're going to explain uh, under each and every stage what is uh, required for a researcher to do. Let's start with the first uh, stage, which is problem identification. A research problem involves an occurrence, occurrence or phenomenon or observation or condition which we lack proper knowledge about. So it addresses lack of information in theory and practice of a given uh, situation. So if you have uh, faced something of which you are lacking proper knowledge about, it means uh, there is a problem. There is a problem. So uh, that's why we're saying that problem identification is whereby uh, it will address lack of information in theory and practice of a given situation. Let, uh, let's give an example. For example, uh, imagine a farmer observes that lack of failure to use DSP fertilizer during planting results in slow growth rate of maize. Here, it means this farmer has just observed uh, whenever he has not used DSP fertilizer, then there is a slow growth uh, rate of maize. But he's not sure whether uh, the DSP, lack of DSP fertilizer is really the main cause of slow growth rate of maize. So uh, if that farmer lacks that proper information, if he, it is really a DSP fertilizer, uh, which is uh, resulting in uh, fast growth rate of maize or not. So there is need to conduct the research to know the real cause of slow growth rate of maize. So that's uh, stage number one. 
that's stage number one problem identification and this stage is very very important just because it's like uh, without the problem anyway you can't conduct uh, the research as we already defined agricultural research we are talking of finding the solution if you have the problem so you use the agricultural research to find the solution to the problem so if there is no problem there is no need of you conducting the experiment so a uh, problem identification is prior uh, stage to agricultural research then the next stage which is stage number two is what we call hypothesis formation hypothesis formation a hypothesis is a statement or explanation to an occurrence uh, or phenomenon thought to be tested and proven or disapproved so it is therefore an assumption that must be proven or disapproved when you have identified the problem the next step for you you need to make uh, to have the guess answer you need to have the guess answer so that guess answer it is not actually the fact it's just your opinion so that opinion need to be proven or disapproved so that opinion or that guess answer which you are having uh, that's what we call hypothesis formation this is also a very important step uh, in the sense that uh, the research relies on the hypothesis which you have formulated the whole research which you are going to conduct is like you are going to test whether that opinion of yours or that guess answer you are having if it is really true or not so hypothesis formation is also a very important stage of agricultural experimentation for example uh, remember that problem which we identified uh, the farmer identified the problem we identified of which uh, whenever the farmer has not applied GSP fertilizer he experienced I mean uh, there was a slow growth rate in maize so it means the assumption which we can make from that problem we identified is that uh, planting maize using GSP fertilizer promotes fast growth planting maize using DSP fertilizer promotes fast growth since our problem was whenever he has not applied DSP fertilizer there was slow growth rate in maize it means the assumption should be planting maize using DSP fertilizer promotes, uh, promotes fast growth The next step, which is also very important, is aim or objective. Each and every research or each and every experiment, uh, there is need for you to have an aim of that research or an aim of that experiment. What are you trying to find out? So, this refers to a specific aspect of the observation or occurrence or problem under study that a researcher or farmer wants to bring out at the end of the research or investigation. Uh, for example, you and I, everyone, is, uh, uh, can have his or her own aim for example, you are here at school, it means you also have uh, the M. You also have the M. So, the same applies when you are conducting agricultural research. There is need uh, for that research to have the M or objective. According to the problem which we identify, our M therefore can be to determine the effect of planting maize using GSP fertilizer on maize growth to determine the effect of planting maize using DSP fertilizer on maize growth so that can be the aim of uh, the experiment 
depending on the problem which we identified it earlier on. The next step is what we call experimental design. Experimental design. This is the framework or structure or plan on how an experiment will be conducted. When you want to conduct the experiment, after you are done uh, identifying the problem, after you have formulated the hypothesis, after you have uh, the aim or the ob objective, you also need to plan before you go to the field, before you go uh, to conduct the experiment, there is need for you to plan in advance. So that stage is what we call experimental design. So we're saying this is the framework or structure or plan that, uh, on how an experiment will be conducted. So under experimental design, uh, you can divide uh, into two groups. You can divide the experimental designs uh, into two groups. These groups, uh, we, call, uh, we call them test group as well as the control group. Test group as well as the control group. What is the difference between test group and the control group? A test group, uh, this one receives the treatment. This receives the treatment while the control group remains untreated. According to the problem we identified of GSP fertilizer, it means uh, 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 where we are going to apply GSP fertilizer, the maze where or the plot where we are going to apply GSP fertilizer, that will be the test group. But the plot uh, where we are not going to apply GSP fertilizer on maize, uh, that will be the control group. So we're saying the difference between test group and control group is that in the test group, you are uh, they receive the treatment, while control group uh, remains untreated. They do not receive the treatment. So, apart from, uh, for example, we're saying that the other plot were going to apply GSP fertilizer, while the other plot were not going to apply GSP fertilizer, uh, the two sets will receive now similar treatment. Apart from the differences in terms of application of GSP fertilizer, but the rest of the uh, treatments should be the same. What are we trying to say? Uh, we mean that the difference will only be in terms of application of the fertilizer. But the other treatments, like in terms of weeding, you should use the same methods of weeding. Uh, you talk of uh, time of weeding uh, should be the same. So all the treatments should be the same. Uh, in the control group as well as in the test group. But the only difference will be in terms of rate of application of fertilizer. That's where our research is relying on. So there will be the differences in terms of application of fertilizer, but uh, the other treatments, both groups, control group as well as the test group, uh, there is need of similar treatment they should receive similar treatment. So after uh, you have planned how the research will be conducted, then the uh, next stage of agricultural research is carrying out the experiment. So under this, it's like you are just going to implement that research design, what you already planned uh, to be done in the field, you just 
implement. For example, it means you have, uh, let's say, two plots where the other plot you are going to uh, plant maize and you are not going to apply GSP fertilizer, while the other plot you are also going to plant the same maize, uh, but uh, you are going to apply GSP fertilizer. So you carry out the experiment. So it involves picking out all selection of test groups and subjecting them to the treatment and subjecting them to the treatment. For example, there is uh, a table there where uh, there is an indication of A, B, then B, A. Uh, then there is also R1, R2. Where it is indicating A, that's the plot, the first plot. Uh, where it is indicating B, that's the second uh, plot. But A, in our case, it is representing the test group. A is representing the test group. It means uh, where there is A, you are going to plant the maize and you are also going to apply GSP fertilizer. But where it is indicating B, it's the plot containing the maize but without applying GSP fertilizer. Then there is also a mention of R. R uh, is like, uh, is, it represents a re to replicate or to repeat. Each and every experiment, it is important to repeat. It is important to repeat. So it's, uh, it represents replication. R stands for replication. Just because uh, we are aware that uh, in the field, you may have some environmental differences. We can talk of the soil factor can be different. You find that in plot one, there is different type of soil. In plot two, there is different type of soil. Or the other plot, it is fatal. Or the other plot, it is not fatal. So to prevent uh, some uh, environmental interferences onto the research, there is need to repeat the experiment. But when you are repeating the experiment, there is also need to uh, interchange. Uh, for example, in a replication two, in plot one, there was A, uh, which was the test group where we applied GSP fertilizer, but now the same plot uh, we have indicated B. It means we are going to plant the maize without applying GSP fertilizer. So it's like we are interchanging where there was uh, uh, where you planted maize and you applied GSP fertilizer, you change, you put them in the other plot where you do not apply GSP fertilizer. So that we are very sure that the effect uh, of GSP fertilizer is having the, is the only one having the impact on the maize growth uh, or not. Otherwise, uh, if you just conduct once, the, the experiment you just conduct once, you may draw the wrong conclusions uh, that GSP fertilizer had the impact. While well, in actual sense, where you uh, planted the maize and applied GSP fertilizer, maybe the, that plot was fertile already. That's why uh, there was the fast growth. So to prevent those uh, interferences, there is need to repeat the experiment and also interchange uh, the test group as well as the control group. Once you have conducted, uh, you are, when you are conducting the research, there is this other stage, data correction and recording. This is also a very, very important uh, step under agricultural research. Under this stage involves observation, measurement, and recording of the attributes under experimentation. For example, in our case, we are assessing 
the impact of GSP fertilizer on maize growth. So it means you are going to observe. Then later on, you do the measurements in terms of the height of the maize from the test group as well as the control group. Then after you have done the measurements, you need to record. That information will be used uh, uh, later on uh, so that you know for sure if GSP fertilizer had the impact on maize growth or not. So it is a very important stage. So, for example, in the uh, experiment we are giving out as an example, this will involve sampling some maize plants uh, from the test group, which is A, as well as the control group, which is B. So we are going to measure their shoot length and also tabulating the data, tabulating the data, writing the information. So that's the data correction and recording. Yeah, so when you are recording the data, most of the times uh, you just record that information anyhow. But the next stage now, which is called data analysis, uh, this is the practice or process in which raw data is ordered and organized to be meaningful. So when you are collecting the data, most of the times you just put the information anyhow. But on data analysis, it's like you are trying to organize that data which you have collected to be meaningful. How? You can do it uh, by calculating the average, calculating the percentage, so that uh, you can easily understand, you can easily understand. And also, uh, this will also involve presentation of data in a clear and understandable way in form of charts. You can present the information in form of tables and in form of graphs. So if you, are, if you have plotted the graph, you can easily understand uh, the, yeah, the information. You can easily understand the information. Then stage number eight, that's it data evaluation data evaluation so under data evaluation is like you are interpreting the results so this is the structured interpretation and giving of meaning to be uh, predicted or actual impacts of proposals or results so it looks at original objectives. What is either predicted or what was accomplished and how it was accomplished. So on that evaluation, it's like you are interpreting uh, the what you have analyzed. For example, we are saying that you, uh, first of all, you recorded the results uh, for the test group where you applied GSP fertilizer. Then you also tabulate the information uh, for the control group where you did not apply GSP fertilizer. Uh, so the information in our case was saying that it will be in form of height of the shoots. So then later on you analyze. On analysis we are saying that you can analyze by maybe having the uh, average. Having the average. So it means you have the average figure for the test group then the average height figure for the control group so if the average figure of the uh, the average figure the average height figure for the test group is higher than the average height figure for the control group it means in your evaluation you can uh, say that uh, GSP fertilizer uh, had the impact on the maize growth, had the impact on the maize growth. Having done that, 
the last stage uh, is report writing. Report writing. As we already know that agricultural experimentation is a fundamental tool of research in agriculture. It is a fundamental tool of research in agriculture. Just because uh, it is used to identify solutions to existing problems. So if you have conducted the research, it means you first identify the problem, then you have handled that problem, uh, uh, therefore it means you have the solution to that problem. So if you have found the solution after conducting the research to a certain problem, there is need for you to write the report so that the world should know what uh, you researched on. So once an experiment is over, a report should be done outlining the findings of the experiment and the most appropriate recommendations. This is very, very important. Otherwise, if you're not going to write the report, it means some other people who just uh, may also conduct uh, the research on the same problem which you've already conducted uh, the experiment on. So, when you are writing uh, the report, when you are writing the report after, after you've conducted the research, there are some basic terms used in uh, report writing. For example, I think we have also mentioned the term data. The term data. Data is uh, the information in form of facts or measurements that can be uh, that uh, that you can analyze. So data, in short, we're just talking of the information or a set of measurements of a particular variable in an experiment. Uh, for example, we can talk of number of aphids per groundnut plant. Another terminology uh, which is frequently used when you are writing the report is variable. So a variable is any measurable characteristic of an experiment. For example, you talk of plant height, uh, days of flowering, yield, and among others. Another terminology is variability. Variability is a characteristic of a biological material, for example, number of flowers in a plant and the size of tuber in a tuber crop can be the example of variability. So we're saying that it is a characteristic of biological material. Yeah, it's a characteristic of biological material. Another terminology which is familiar is population. But now it's somehow different at the way we define we are, uh, in these social studies. This population we refer to as a set of counts of a single variable. For example, we are talking uh, of the test group having uh, individual plants in that plot. We are talking of the maize which are going to grow in that plot. Uh, let's say in the test group as well as in the uh, uh, in, in the test group as well as in the so those maize now just because it's where we're going to get the height from them uh, we call them uh, population but now let's imagine the whole plot is having 3,000 individual plants 